cold steel of battle. Steel that kills, maims, wounds. Harmless as you see it here, but press the trigger, pull the pin, fire the salvo. And it's something else again. Fragments, red hot with a tearing, blasting force. Fragments like these removed by surgery from battle casualties. Here's the record of how four such cases were handled. All these men were wounded in the Italian campaign of January 44. Here's number one, T4 Salowitz, hit by a shell fragment on the second day of the month. A first aid dressing was applied at the battalion aid station. Then this ride by truck, rough and full of jolts. He was admitted to the evacuation hospital, examined and operated on just two hours after his injury. Here's the tear in his trousers, not much larger than a dime. And here's his wound, right posterior thigh, just below the buttock. Spinal anesthesia was used. A generous operative field was draped so that the incision could be extended in any direction. The primary incision is vertical and passes through the skin wound. The margins of the wound and the entrance track are excised and bleeding is controlled. Further dissection reveals the shell fragment lying in the hamstring muscle. All devitalized muscle is trimmed away. The wound is dusted with sulfonilamide crystals. Vaseline gauze is used to pack the wound lightly open. A sterile dressing completes the operation. The patient was transferred to the 36th General Hospital nine days later. Here's the wound at that time, healing satisfactorily. Because of its location and the danger of infection, no secondary closure will be made. Here it is four weeks after injury. And here it is a week later, granulating in, the skin healing over. Eight weeks after injury, healing is complete. The patient was discharged to convalescent camp, and from there he returned to active duty. Case number two is PFC Nace. He didn't spend much time in the hospital either. That scar under his scapula doesn't bother him, and he's ready to fight again. He was on an LST in Anzio Harbor. Things were pretty rough. A bomb had his name on it, and he got it in the back. The British hospital carrier, Leinster, was near, and Nace was put aboard at once. Under pentothal anesthesia, the surgeon excised a fairly generous margin of skin. Maybe a little too much. Here's the fragment lying superficially. Sulfonilamide powder is used this time, and Vaseline gauze completes the operation. Nace was back in his bunk within two hours after he was hit. The Leinster moved out of the harbor that night, and next day he was transferred to the 300th General Hospital at Naples. Here's the wound one week after injury. Secondary closure will hasten healing. A catgut tie used in the first operation is removed. Wound margins are freshened by gentle cleansing with sterile soap and water and by a saline irrigation. The wound edges are approximated and closed with silkworm gut sutures. Eight days later, the sutures are removed. The wound is well healed. Nineteen days after he was hit, Nace was ready for discharge via the replacement center and so back to active... This right leg belongs to private file. Five hours ago, a shell fragment plowed into it. The wound of entry is small, but the damage underneath is great. Gentle exploration reveals the path of the missile, down and inward, deep into the calf muscle.
As a result, it's necessary to enlarge the skin incision. Devitalized muscle is excised. A blood clot is evacuated. The shell fragment is then removed. There are no unexplored pockets where a hematoma can collect. Unexplored or improperly treated wounds of this type are always dangerous potential sources of gas bacillus infection. These wounds are never closed primarily. The wound ten days later, healing from the bottom, clean and shallow. But the skin defect is large and would take months to heal spontaneously. For this type of case, a skin graft will be of great value to cover the skin defect. Here's the wound 15 days after injury. And here it is two weeks later, ready for skin grafting. Two split thickness grafts were removed from the opposite thigh by means of the Paget dermatome. They were tacked in place with interrupted sutures. The grafts were perforated with a scalpel to prevent serum floating them off. One week later, five weeks after injury, the stitches were removed. Grafts have taken. The patient was discharged, ready for duty, one month after this scene was shot. This is PFC Eppinger, brought into an evacuation hospital 17 hours after an anti-personnel mine had caused multiple soft tissue wounds. There appeared to be a wound of entry and one of exit in the left arm. But x-rays revealed a foreign body. An incision was made to connect the two skin wounds. The margins of the wound were debrided. The tunnel track of the missile was then converted into a gutter. And here is the pellet. It would be most unwise to do a primary closure. The danger of infection is too great. The same for this through and through wound in his hand. Fortunately, it didn't involve the tendons. He also lost some skin from a thumb. This was cleaned up and dressed. Two weeks after injury, the wound in his left arm is clean. It is dressed and moistened with saline. A week later, the wound is ready for secondary closure or skin graft. Because the patient had caught a cold, it couldn't be done at this time. Instead, butterfly adhesive straps were used to bring the skin margins together. The strapping was reapplied from time to time. Note the improvement in the appearance of the wound. Finally, one month after his injury, the patient was taken to an operating room with all modern conveniences. The wound was excised, and closed. The result, nicely healed eight days later. His other wounds did equally well, and 11 weeks after injury, he was back at duty. We have seen only four cases of soft tissue wound management. They are typical of thousands found wherever there are battles, weapons, and bodies. Prompt first aid attention, fast transport, wise surgery, uneventful recovery, and back to duty. In this war, as never before, an overwhelming majority of the wounded do live to fight again. This is Medicine in Action.